Okay? So he says he alone is immortal and he is the only one who is immortal, nobody else. Yes? Now, in what context would that be true? Is it the death, the physical death or the spiritual death? No, it's his existence. He doesn't, he's always will exist. Yeah, we are not talking about his eternity. Obviously he's eternal, yeah, we know. But you see, the term immortal means not subject to death. Means yeah. he will not die. Uh, it means as well, it always will be existing. Yeah, if he's immortal and eternal, yeah. that's obvious. But the thing is, the important thing here, the term is not eternal, the term is immortal. Yes. And the term immortal means? It doesn't die. Exactly. Yeah. So, because God the Father is the only one, according to the Bible, who did not die or will ever die. Yes? So only He, it yeah. says He alone is immortal. That actually excludes everyone else. Yeah. Yes? Do you agree? Yeah. Does it exclude Jesus as well? No. Why? Because did Jesus die or not? No, that's the body. The, 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 the body. The, okay. Maybe now is a good time to define what is death because that was one of your questions, yeah? yeah? How do you understand? What do you understand by the term death? I mean, it depends on the context. I mean, uh, this is the context. First Timothy 6. I mean, uh, Jesus, did Jesus die? Yes, as a human being, as a body, he died. Uh, but as a spirit, he didn't. Okay, how many persons were Jesus? One or two? How many persons was he? Jesus is one. Okay, so which... One of the three. So if I ask you the question, which yeah. person died on the, uh, on the cross? Uh, Jesus died on the cross. No, no, which person died? Which person? The Son. So from the, fa from the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, yeah. the second person of the Trinity died? Yes. Do you agree? Yeah, the reincarnation, the physical okay. body. Yeah. Did the Father ever die? No. Okay, did the Holy Spirit ever die? No. No. So who is like the one? Because they were not physical, they didn't yeah. materialize. The physical, now, uh, I will give you the definition yeah. of death, you tell me if you agree or disagree with it. So death normally means, uh, even in this context and the context of the crucifixion, it means separation of the soul, from the body yeah yeah did that happen to jesus yes did that happen to jesus okay so he died yes yes now that means he is not immortal based on first timothy 6 16 he is not immortal we are not talking about yeah. that doesn't mean ceases you cease to exist yeah. it doesn't mean that yeah. so if anybody has that understanding please discount it because that is not what i defined it as and neither that uh, does it mean so in the bible in this context so that means just separation of the soul from the body. Yes? Did that happen to Jesus? I'll go with your definition. If that's your no, definition. no, you can, you, you can disagree with me if you think it's, it's wrong. Yeah, because that, uh, I mean, as I said, uh, depends on the scenario you're using it. So if you're using it now, Jesus died on the cross. Yeah. The, yes, it's a separation, uh, the, the death of the body, the separation of the spirit yeah. from the body. I'll go with that. Yes. Okay. So if he died, it implies that he is not immortal. No, but that's very basic. That's very basic. He can manage, I'm sure. Because now we're talking about the dimension, the physical dimension, rather than a spiritual dimension. You know, when you know Jesus was with God. Yeah, yeah, but we are not talking about that. We are talking about his death on the during the crucifixion. Yeah, yeah. You see, if you say that one person died, and it is normally a person who dies, the flesh yeah. is not a person. Do you know that? Yeah. The flesh, yeah. the flesh, by well, the flesh is actually a nature. Divinity is a nature, his uh, humanity is a nature, which is the flesh and the body you're talking about. Yeah. Yes? So these are his natures. We are talking about the personhood. Mm -hmm. The person, did he die or not on the cross? I mean, that's a very... Uh, I mean, what do you mean by the person? Now we're, so we're going to... You actually lot, answered that question already. I, I asked you a minute ago. Yeah. I asked yeah. you which person died and you said the son. You said the sec you agreed that it was the second person of the Trinity. Are you yes. going to retract that now? Are you no, still? No, I'm trying to follow up because you were using lots of words. I'm trying to, to uh, get. To I use three three yeah. terms. I use the term immortal. I use the term uh, death, yeah. and then I use the term nature, yeah. which is the two natures of Jesus, the human yeah, nature yes, the and the div divine and the uh, the flesh or the uh, the human nature. So you see, we are not talking about the nature because you see, when a person dies. They do not say, oh, look at this kind nature died. Or they don't say that uh, this person who is very harsh, yeah. he died. You see what I mean? They say the person died. Simple yeah. as that. Yeah. So if I ask you a clear question, from the three persons of the Trinity, who died for you? After the Trinity, no one died. The, the three persons. So she's saying of the Trinity, nobody died. So who died? Jesus was eternally God. I'm just asking you who died. That's all. The human nature of Okay. Is the human nature a person? Yes. Okay. Is the divine nature a person? Yes. So how many persons is Jesus? It's the same divine nature. 
so divine nature two persons one the same divine nature one which came as a man no no no, no you said you know the human you nature okay, you know that's the reason i don't want to talk to you guys no. because you come and interrupt instead of having a dialogue you, you come and interrupt so i'm going to ignore you guys and i'm going to back, go back to john so John, based on, the, we know that there are two natures of, of Jesus Christ, yeah? We know that these two natures are not two persons. Because that would, that would actually be, the, it's called a heresy of Nestorianism, which he is appealing to. It's called a heresy. Do you see? Why is it a heresy? Because anyone who believes that there is two persons, yes, inside Jesus, he's a heretic, guys like him, yes? So that's the reason. Yeah, that's why I'm, I, I know you don't agree with them, and I'm glad you. Know it's his views, yeah. So I'm glad you don't agree with these heretical views of two persons. That. Okay. So what I'm saying is that if we ask you which person died, yes, I think you should get the point that we don't want to talk to you. So go and disturb somebody else. Well, I have a right to talk to him without you disturbing me. Well, if you say two persons, that is a heresy. Do you not know that? No, you divine. don't know you what you're talking about. What you're okay, talking what is the heresy of Nestorianism? Let's see if you know that. I, I, don't I don't care. Because you don't know. They don't know the basics. This is the basics of the no, church doctrines. And that is the reason. You see, why do they come and disturb? You know why? Because they know, they know that they cannot have a discussion which is rational, which is clearly from the Bible, they cannot have that. So what they do is, they insult. Okay, anyway. The point here is that Jesus, if he's one person, and that is a person which died, then that he cannot be immortal. That's all I'm saying. And that goes against the nature of God Almighty. I see, I see, I see what you're trying to say. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, as I said, uh, death, immortality, uh, you're using different words. Second? It's, it's the terms you're using. Yeah. Sorry, guys, can we move a bit there? Let's take down the camera as well. It's the terms you're using. I'm not speaking. I'm using the same terms that are in the Bible, my friend. I'm not using anything different. So the term immortal is in 1 Timothy 6.16. The fact that he died is in Romans 10, 9, yes. where he died and he was raised by God. Yes, yes. So these are the terms I'm using from the Bible. Yeah, I'm not using any specific means. The only time I use uh, certain terms like the Nestorian uh, heresy, that is actually the, the church which defined it. So I'm using that, which is not in the Bible, which is outside the Bible. But it's still very much uh, defined by the church, what this heresy is. So, so you're having a problem understanding how, how uh, uh, Jesus, the son, died? No, I'm not having a problem. I'm saying if you insist that Jesus died, then you have to acknowledge that he is not immortal. You can't have it both ways. Either he died or he did not die. No, because yeah, where is Jesus for us? Where is now? Where is Jesus now? No, no, that's Jesus the sitting on the right yeah. hand of the As a Muslim, we believe that he never died. So that's why he's still alive. So for us, he's so he's going to come in the second coming. Yeah. So we as Muslims, we believe that as well. Yeah, yeah. So we don't believe he was either crucified or even killed. Yes. Yeah. In fact, he ascended to God Almighty. I, I, and then in the uh, before the end times, he will come again. So what I'm saying is that if the Christians are consistent with that approach, they will realize that Jesus cannot be God. Because he, he died. You see what I mean? And God doesn't die. It's as simple as that, my friend. Yes, I understand. It's just the terms you're using. That's I'm using the term that's used in the Bible. Okay. That's all. But for us Christians, I know you, thought, you mentioned about consistency. Well, uh, for us, just to, to uh, explain, Jesus is immortal, always existed, always will be. Now, how to solve this uh, thing that he entered creation and he died? Now, you said Jesus is immortal. Can you back that up? Can you substantiate it? You made a claim. Can you substantiate it from the Bible? Because you already admitted that he died. How can he be immortal? An immortal being, by definition, does not die. Yeah, different kind of death. Death. Different kind of death. Okay, there is two kinds of death. Let me, I don't know. Let, let me show you the two kinds of death. have to go and do a proper research. Yeah, yeah, sure. Just no problem. Do a proper death. research. Yeah. In the Bible, there is a spiritual death and there is a physical death. Correct. When it comes to spiritual death, it is not only God who is immune to that. Okay? It's also all the believers according to the Bible. Yeah, it's separation from God. Yeah, because yeah. according to your Bible, it says that anyone who believes in God or accepts Him will not perish, will not die. Mm -hmm. Yes? So, yeah, you're, so as far as spiritual death is concerned, God is not the only one who is unique to this particular 
uh, phenomenon. Okay. However, when it comes to physical death, there is only one yeah. who can claim this attribute of immortality. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. And that is not Jesus. Okay. Just, no, just but do you agree with that? That is not Jesus. No, no, I, I don't agree with that. So you, uh, you uh, somehow believe Jesus did not die? Because you can't have it both ways, my friend. Because as soon as you say he died, yeah. then you have to admit that he is not immortal. But you ignored what happened just after that. Yeah. Salam alaikum, hiding bro. Hey, Mubarak. <laughs> but you just ignored yeah. what happened straight, up, straight after the death. Straight after the death, he has been risen. Even then? So it doesn't... It, well, okay. Uh, death, by our definition... Sh shall I tell you life. why that proves that he is not God? But can I say something? Yeah, you go on. You die physically. You don't get risen again. No, no, we do. God will resurrect everyone one day. No, but, everyone. But, but, Yes, that's at All time. you're talking about is the time. Jesus resurrected in three days, according that's to you. Others will resurrect some other time. That's correct. That, yes. That's the definition. By the way, there were people in the Bible who were risen by Elijah from dead, who were risen by Elisha from dead. Yes, in the Old Testament. If you don't know, you can check it up. It's in two kings, where even the bones of Elisha were able to raise a person back to life. Yes. So there are people who have risen from dead. It's not just Jesus Christ. So if you're using that as a um, as your, what do you say, uh, proof and evidence that he's God, then it's not, it's not God. Well, Look, I'm sure, I'm sure that uh, I, I, I don't know that one. Probably heard it. Uh, or let me, let me give you one point about the resurrection. I don't know the context of it and what really happens in order to compare it to Jesus. Uh, I'll give you the context if you want. Yeah, yes. So Elisha, during the time of Elisha, what happened was uh, actually he had died and he had been, uh, uh, he had been buried already. Elijah. So what happened, Elisha, not Elijah, Elisha. Okay. Okay. Which is not Elijah, the John the Baptist. No, no it's not. Uh, Old Testament. Sorry. Yeah, it's in the Old Testament. It's in two kings. I forgot the exact reference, but you can find it. Okay. So what happened was the Jews were going to bury a man who had died. So they wanted to bury him. But when they saw that raiders had, were coming, raiders, you know, they were coming to raid. They were coming yeah. to pillage and raid. So when they saw them, I think it was the Moabites or something like that. When they came, these, these people, what they did was, they took the body, the, the, the corpse, and they put it in the, uh, in, in the tomb of Elisha. Okay. Now, Elisha's bones, when they touched this dead man, his corpse, he got life and he stood up. Okay. So you see, the dead bones of Elisha were able to give life to a dead man. Okay. And I think that is even a bigger miracle than Jesus raising from the dead. I will, I will go with this. Yeah, go on. So what I'm saying, my friend, is that if Jesus is able to die and if he's able to resurrect it proves that he's not immortal because death and resurrection do not apply to someone who doesn't die do not apply to an immortal being let me repeat that again death and resurrection only apply to mortals do not apply to people who do not die do not apply to immortals because an immortal person doesn't die in the first place. So there's no question of him rising from the dead. Yeah, but, but you see, but in the case of definition. Jesus, no, no, he, resurrection, what is resurrection? Yeah, but that's, that's your definition. I don't agree with it. I'm John, saying it's not true. what is the definition of resurrection? I don't know. Rising from dead. Yes, I mean, okay? you can describe it in a simple way and then more complex well, you can, way. You can make it complicated if you want, yeah. but you'll still come to the same conclusion. That resurrection means to rise back from being dead. Yes. Yes? yes. Did Jesus die? Yes. yes. Did Jesus resurrect? Yes. Did the Father die? No. Did the Father resurrect? No. So who is immortal from the two? It's clear. It's the Father. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. I know what you mean, but it's not. So why are you fighting your your natural inclination towards the truth? What you're doing is you're fighting it. Don't fight it. Absolutely not. Acknowledge the truth when you see it. No, no, I can see your point. But what I'm saying, it's a weak argument. Why is it weak? It's very strong. It's, no, it's shallow. It's, okay, which part of it is shallow and weak? Go on. Tell me which part. The, the trying to interpret the, what is immortality, what is death. This is, I'm not saying I'm going by your definition 100%, but you can expand a lot on these terms. Why didn't you ask me where I got the definitions from? Well, I can ask you if you want. Yeah, so I got it from the Strong's Concordance, which is a Christian kind of uh, dictionary in order for you to understand every word in the Bible. Okay, okay so it defines every word. Yeah. So it's not my definition, my friend. No, yes, yeah. you can go and look at the Greek term. I think it's called Anastasia or Anastasia or something like that. Mm -hmm. I might be mispronouncing it. 
That is what immortal means. And this is defined as someone who is not subject to death. Or someone who doesn't, ex doesn't perish or doesn't experience death. You see what I mean? That's now, you see, with and I, I, I made it very yeah. clear that death does not mean cease to exist. Yeah. Do you remember? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm using the correct definition based on the Christian text, not yeah. my definition. Yeah. So if you think I'm making it up, please go home and check it. Okay, I will check All it. All right. But, but anyway, look, yeah. from our natural uh, understanding of the terms, and these are simple terms, death, resurrection, crucifixion, um, immortal. These are everyday terms. They are not some... What do you say? Special terms only known by the scholars. Yeah, they are simple. These are simple terms and based on the context, God is telling you that he doesn't die. If God himself is defining, who are we to define God? So God defines himself and he, he tells us not everything about him, but there are certain things which he tells us about him in order that we recognize him. Yeah. And one of them is the fact that he is immortal. And I gave you the reference. Yes. First Timothy 6.16 is yes. also in First Timothy 1.17. Yes, so there are quite many references in the Bible. Yeah, I agree with that. Yes, there's another important attribute of God. It's called omniscience, which means all knowing. Okay. Do you believe Jesus was all knowing? Do I believe Jesus was all knowing? Was he all knowing? Did he know everything like God should do? everything actually from the Bible about Jesus. No, no, no. I'm not asking if you know everything about Jesus. Based on what he informed us of in the Bible yeah. and based on the passages in the Bible, yeah. do you believe that Jesus is all-knowing? Okay. I think I have a hint where you want me to go. Because you probably will want me to go to when he didn't know the hour. Yeah, that is one of them. Yes. There's another one as well, quite significant. The, yeah. fig, the fig tree, do you remember? When he was hungry, he approached the fig tree. Yeah. Yes. So when he was hungry, he approached the fig tree yeah. and he realized there's no figs and he curses the fig tree yeah. and the fig tree withers and dies within days or sometimes even immediately, I think. I believe that Jesus is all-knowing. That's true. If he wants to know, yes. But if he... What do you mean if he wants to know? If you know something, yeah. then you know it. But, uh... You can't decide and say, I don't know. You would be lying if you did that. It's a complex thing, but I would say... It's very simple, my friend. I would say Jesus is all-knowing. I would say that. So why did he not know the fixed season, which even a farmer at this time would know? Uh, you know, you cannot, I cannot explain that particular, but I know for sure he did know that. He didn't know. He approached it. Yeah. The reason he cursed the fig tree is because he didn't see any fruit on it. That's correct. You see what I mean? Yeah. But this is common knowledge even for I, 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 a, even I, I, for I a farmer it. at that time. I remember it. I think I can comment on that. Okay, please. Fig tree because, please do. Yes, he wanted to imply that we the people, we have to be fruitful at all times. Not in a particular season. And he mentioned that... that wait, wait, you have to be fruitful? All times. All times. Yeah, we have to be good people. Not in a particular season or hour. Not for so why curse the tree? You could have said that. No, yes, but, but that's a clear. Why curse a perfectly fruit-bearing tree which people could have benefited from? No, but it wasn't fruit-bearing. It wasn't bearing because it wasn't the season. But, I mean... That's and and guess who made that law? God himself made the law that the freaks tree or any tree doesn't bear fruit outside the season yeah. so the, the, what was the fault of the tree which was following the laws of nature or the laws of God to be uh, to yeah, be specific yeah. see what I mean I agree with that. so that that argument doesn't actually wash it doesn't it's not a rational argument to say that he wanted to uh, teach a lesson he could have just said it like he says all the time he gives parables you know Correct. yes he doesn't need to kill people to give parables yes, yes? remember about the uh, the, pro uh, the prodigal son and everything yes and about uh, People who do not obey him, they will be killed and so on. Yes, in Luke, the proverb about the king and uh, the son and those people who do not obey him. Anyway, where, where he says that I've not come for peace, but I've come to bring a sword. You see what I mean? So he was giving, he was giving uh, analogies to you. He could have done the same thing. Why destroy a perfectly good fruit, fruit bearing tree, which, which by, by its own conditioning, did not bear fruit outside the season. Why I'm questioning God, why he does this thing in a certain way. Well, it's, it's up to him, it's not up but to him. But anyway, the, the passage... concluded the same thing out of By the way, the passage did say yeah. that Jesus felt hungry and he approached the tree. Yeah. So we already know the reason why he came to the tree. Yeah. It wasn't to teach people lessons. He came to the tree, the fig tree, yeah. because he was hungry. Yeah. Remember, if a God Could wants be. to eat yeah. food, yes, it can just snap 
He can just snap his finger, maybe the fruit will bat tree. Yeah, See what I mean? Why did God need to curse the tree? I don't understand. No, he just tell us why he did it. Because it wasn't bearing fruit. He was hungry, he approached the tree, there was no fruit on it, he got angry and he cursed it. Very well, simple. As, as a Christian, as I'm nobody uh, interpreted this or explained this verse to me, I straight away absorbed what the message is. The message is we have to be fruitful all the time. We have to be good people all the time. Not in a particular month or a particular time of the year. Otherwise, no, but that's, that's, Jesus did not come for that message. Jesus came to the tree. If you want, open the passage and look. That's the message I got from No, no, but you're ignoring the context of the, of the passage then. Because Jesus approached the tree because he was hungry. What does this make difference if it's hungry or not? It tells you the reason he came to the tree. So the Bible only is putting us just to show us that Jesus was hungry? No, no, no the Bible gave you the message why Jesus went to the tree. Yeah, but because there is a big message from this, not just because he's, not because he's hungry. We know he's hungry, he can be hungry. Because so, so, so let me get this right. Are you saying that all Christians are fruitful 24 hours a day? No. no. So if you guys are not fruitful 24 hours a day, yeah. based on your interpretation of that passage, yeah. then Jesus will curse you. Uh, Am I right? Yeah, possibly. I mean, look, because, uh, <laughs> are you saying possibly Jesus will curse you yeah. because you are not fruitful 24 hours a day? I mean, a man got to sleep, right? A man got to eat. Yes. A man, a man has yeah. needs. Yeah. So you, you, no one can be fruitful in that sense 24 hours a day. No, if we have a sin, actually we are somehow cursed because sin separates us from God and that's a curse by definition. So we have to be fruitful, yes, and that's why we cannot achieve that. Okay. That's why Jesus died for our sins and we say, you know what, you cannot be fruitful 24 hours. Exactly, my point. So, so is he going to curse you if you're not fruitful 24 hours? No, it thanks God, I believe. So that. then there is a possibility that there are times when you're not fruitful and there are times when you are fruitful, Correct. which is exactly what the tree was doing. Correct. So you don't learn any lesson from the tree then? Even based on your analogy. I, I learned the standards of God that he wants from me. And because I'm short of those standards, okay. I'm okay. I'm now, I'm what is now, the, my sin is erased by his blood on, on the cross. That's, that's the other issue with Christians. Are you saying that the only way you can be forgiven is by human sacrifice? Uh, the only way I can be, depends on the, on the, I mean, every sin has to be punished, right? Why? Why can't God forgive? Because he wouldn't be just. Why would he not be just? Because if he can forgive, where is justice? I mean, if I... If I Do you know what forgiveness means? I mean, it has to, I mean you have to pay for, uh, for your sin. No, forgiveness doesn't mean you don't have to pay for it. Forgiveness means you don't have to pay for it. For example, if you borrowed money from your brother and your, br your brother tells you that I forgive you your debt, that means you don't have to pay him back. That is what forgiveness means. If your brother says, can you pay me in kind? That means, I don't know, pay him, I don't know, give him a car or do some work for him or something. That's called payment in kind. That is still a payment though. It's not forgiveness. Are you telling me that God is unable to forgive? God can forgive, of course. But he is, I mean, why, why is this all sacrificial law that has been instructed through all the Old Testament. Even with why, the sacrificial it, laws, he doesn't it, forgive you. Yeah, but why would it not which just, are, you know, don't sacrifice, I'll forgive you. No, the, the sins, listen, you need to understand something. I'm talking about Jesus, who is a man. Do you believe in human sacrifice? Do I believe in humans? I don't believe in human sacrifice. So who was sacrificed on the cross? No, it was Jesus, but that's not... Was Jesus a human? Well, uh, no. I it's mean, either God's sacrifice or human sacrifice. Either perfect, way, is a cash 22 for It's the perfect sacrifice. I wouldn't say it was a human sacrifice. Okay, no. so who, who died, God or a human on the cross? It was the... Oops. Okay, no, it's not oops. I'm just trying <laughs> I was to, going to say something. I said, no, no, no. It's a cash 22, my friend. It's, I'm trying to put it together. Okay, put it together. Go on. It was... Uh, temple of which is uh, to give you the right answer I don't want to give you a wrong answer my friend do you agree that Jesus was human or not I would say, I would say sorry sorry you said sorry because it's like yeah, yeah I, don't, I just want to give you the right topic. can God can God be sacrificed by his own creation no it was the body of the Christ that was the the, the blood of it yeah. which is human <laughs> which is human yes. thank you yeah. so it was a human sacrifice no, no, there's no, no way out of it one person sacrifice yeah like one person that one person was a human my friend oh yeah that was, so it was a human sacrifice right maybe you don't like the term human sacrifice no, no, but that well, is just denial well if jesus come as uh, another as a, uh, 
being, as another, let's okay, say... Okay, if he comes as an alien, that will be an alien sacrifice. But right yeah. now, we're talking about Jesus as a human. So it's a human sacrifice. Yeah, if you want, yeah, but it's not a human. It's, it was, it's not a human? Whatever he is... What do you mean, whatever? Let him, let him to say God. Let him go to what? That way. So whatever he is, was at that time, that's a sacrifice. Like, human could be anybody. You're, you're trying to imply that... But I'm not talking about anybody. I'm talking about okay. Jesus. So, yeah, if we just stick that with Jesus and the human, only with Jesus, yes. It's not like you're going to grab someone from this... John, why are you struggling with a simple matter? So was human. it a human sacrifice or not? It was the perfect uh, human uh, sacrifice. Finally, yes. thank you. You know what that is, according to the Old Testament? It's a pagan ritual. No, uh, that's what I'm telling you. If, you. if you sacrifice people, I'm telling you only... He was about, a person. Yeah, yeah, but only about this particular moment and this particular... Because Jesus, he took a body and he was the perfect sacrifice in a way that he didn't do any sin. That doesn't matter. He was, he was still human, my friend. Yeah, 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 but he was not... Yeah, yeah, you're making generalizing... A specific. Yeah. I'm giving you a specific person yeah. of a specific time yeah. and a specific nature. So, that's not vegan. so don't tell me I'm making a general statement. But I'm making a very specific statement yeah. only with regards to Jesus Christ. And Jesus yeah. Christ, according to you, was a human who died. Correct. And And without this human sacrifice, you can never be forgiven, am I right? Without this sacrifice. Yeah. Without this human sacrifice. A human. I have to. Without Why you don't sacrifice. like the term human? Because you said it's a perfect human sacrifice. Just now you said that. Yeah. So why can't I use that same term? This perfect human sacrifice, you cannot be forgiven until it happens. Yeah. Am I, do you agree with me? I'm saying that because you used it to generalize it as being pagan. How am I generalizing? When I'm telling you that this particular sacrifice yeah. was a human sacrifice. We can leave if anyone that. sacrifices a human, is a, is a pagan ritual. Yeah, correct. But Jesus, Jesus was an exceptional... You know, it, it, it defeats the purpose of what, G, what God said in the Old Testament. He would rebuke people who would sacrifice to, the, to God their children, human children, yeah? I understand you. And he would, he would actually say, this did not even cross his mind. Yeah, yeah to advocate such a thing and then it became your most important doctrine that without that you cannot even be forgiven the, the thing which is most most hated to God that it wouldn't even cross his mind became in the New Testament the only thing which can save you you see the you see the complete u-turn you don't see <laughs> then you should go home and observe this video you're making a general rule out of one single... I didn't make the rule, by the way. It was God who made the rule in the Old Testament. No human sacrifices. It wasn't me. Let's, it was God. You keep saying, I make the rule. It wasn't let's me. Agree to disagree. No, I let's agree to agree with what the Bible actually stated in the, in the Old Testament. No, that no human sacrifices were allowed. Yeah, yeah, no, no, but, you, you're but in the New Testament, <laughs> the only way you can be saved is by this human sacrifice.